right now, we're going to talk about Enoch. Enoch's a real person. What happened to Enoch? <laughs> he got taken up with his body. So if he still has his body, he can come back anytime he wants. He still has the body. The body is very important. We, that's why they, we find out that they argued over the body of Moses, we find out in Jude. The body is very important. Yep. Did John die? There's no record of John dying. Does he still got the body? Maybe he's here. All right. We'll do uh, Genesis 5, 18 to 24. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll come back to Enoch in a second. Just a quick record of, of Enoch. When Jared had lived 162, 162 years, he fathered Enoch. Jared lived after he fathered Enoch 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Okay? When Enoch was born, Enoch's number seven, Adam's still alive. Adam met Enoch. They would talk to each other. Enoch knew exactly what was going on. Yep. He's six times father plus five grandfathers. Enoch's number seven. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah. This is interesting. Some rabbis say Enoch didn't necessarily walk with God before that. And he had a son. When he had a son, he realized a father's love. After, very clear, after he fathered Methuselah, he decided to walk with God. Wasn't necessarily a good guy, we don't know. It was after that. Thus, all the days Enoch were 365 years, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Yep. Boom. Crossed over with his body. We move to Genesis 6, 1 to 8. Increasing corruption on the earth. All right. <laughs> Lots of trading going on. The DNA is changing. We're becoming less and less like our father in heaven and more and more like a different father. When man began to multiply on the face of the earth, of the land, on the face of the land, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God, the Benai Elohim, okay, saw the daughters of man were attractive. And they took, took, taken, took as their wives any they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh, his days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Who are the Nephilim? The Nephilim are the children, physical children, okay? Very physical children. The Nephilim on the earth in those days and also afterwards. And the sons of God came to the doors of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of the man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made men on the earth. So the intention of the heart, what's your heart? It's your cellular memory. It's your frequency set. It's your nature. And we become wicked and evil all the time. Okay, we're choosing death, not life. All the time, that's who we are. And the Lord regretted that he had made men on the earth and, grieved, and it grieved into his heart. So the Lord said, I'll blot out the man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. Why is he wiping out all the animals? If only there was a book that could tell us. <laughs> For I am sorry that I have made them, but now I found favour in his eyes. So verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, the flood, and also afterwards, after the flood. Very important. Okay, so this is one is as important to describe the fallen nature and the evil of man as much as the fall is. Okay? And why is it only given that? Because this is 9-11. All the readers know this story. There's other books that describe it. It's referring to the other books that you everybody knows. The all the ancient cultures knew it, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Macedonians, and the Greeks, all their stories are of beings coming down before the flood, having children, pure beings before the flood, after flood, mixed beings. They all know it. And guess what? They see it as awesome. The gods came down, taught us stuff, then to bread with us, then we got half gods, 
and they tore the stuff. They see it as great. And that's why this is here. The Bible is saying it's not great. You're talking about Elohim's. But the Elohim, Elohim says it's not good. So we need to understand what's going on here. And where we understand that is the book of Enoch. 